Okay. My father died when I was three years old. All that I know about him comes from photographs and cards and letters and memorabilia that his family shared with me. Now they're all gone and there's nobody left. And what that means is everything that I have now is everything that I'll ever have to tell me about my father. And it's not enough. He was 36 years old when he died and I'm sure he never imagined that all his daughter would know about him would be from what he left behind. It made me think about my own collection of memorabilia and I realized that keeping it like this is probably just as bad as not keeping it at all. But what do you do? What do you keep? What do you throw away? It's hard to decide, but it's really important that you do. My mother was a hoarder, and she couldn't figure out what to keep, and she couldn't figure out what to throw out, so she kept it all. My daughters and I had to clean out her two-story, three-bedroom home, and we didn't know what to keep. We had to make some really hard decisions. And as you can imagine, what happened was about half her things ended up in the trash. We only had 10 days to do the cleaning, and we had no criteria on what was important and what wasn't, and I still have nightmares. But you can avoid this fate by asking yourself one simple question. When you look at all the material that you've gathered, think about what is the story you want to tell? What things that you have best support that story? And that's how you can start by determining what to keep and what to save. So I went to the experts. I thought, who better than a museum has information about how to organize and store valuable collections. So I wanted to know, what do they do? How do they figure out when they get these large incoming collections and donations coming in, what do they do with them and how do they store them? And I found that they use archival quality folders, boxes, photo sleeves, and albums to store things like photos and letters and diaries. And they keep them in in uh, labeled places, and you can get this archival material online for household use. And you'll see they take the heavy things like rugs and quilts, and they fold them, and they'll put tissue in between them so that the folds don't get permanent. And then they'll refold them periodically so that they stay fresh. And they also will roll some of them using padding to keep them and store them that way. You'll see when everything's wrapped up, it's hard to tell what's what. So it's important to label and describe what you are keeping. You can use a spreadsheet and use that to keep track of what you kept and why you kept it and where you put it, and that'll help you organize it. Here are three tips to pro uh, protect your original irreplaceable photos. One is to scan or copy your originals and then put those in that safe archival storage system and store that away from heat or moisture and they suggested to me that a closet in your bedroom is probably a really good place. Then you display your copies, not your originals, and that's because the copies can be easily reproduced if something happens to them, if they fade or if they get damaged and your originals will be safe. But be sure to document who, what, when and where because looking at those photographs with no context is hard. What not to do? If you have one of these magnetic photo albums, get rid of those things right away because they're not really magnetic, but they have this nasty little yellow glue that will eat through your photos eventually and destroy them. So you want to make sure with what you save that you tell the story behind it. Why did you save it and why is it important? You want to tell that story so that when your family inherits these things, they aren't just some cute little knickknacks, but they have a purpose that help tell your family's story. Here's some additional things you can do. Number your photos and make a fact sheet that tells what they are. That way you don't have to write on the back of the photos and chance destroying them. Write a legacy letter or several. I can help you with that. Write a memoir 
or record or videotape your story. Did you, are you looking for ways to make your children more resilient or maybe boost their self-confidence? Studies have shown that children who know their family stories and understand their family history are better able to handle stress. A beautiful scrapbook like this is a great way to share that story. Or you might want to, you might want to put everything in a book and have it published. It's a wonderful way to share with a large family. And if you take proper care of these kinds of books, they can last for decades. Be sure and get a digital copy so that you have that to refer to, which brings us to digital media. How do you store it? All the experts told me, make sure you have several backups. You want to use the cloud or save them on hard drives. And then this one was new, separate the hard drives geographically. So you can have a hard drive here in Bozeman, send a duplicate to your cousin in Nebraska or something like that to keep it safe. So I know the importance of these memories. My, especially when people are gone. My father is gone, and my daughters have lost their father. And it's really important to me to keep these memories alive so that my children and their children will have them for decades to come. Don't let your personal history disappear. It's one of the best things you can do for your family is make sure that you have that organized for them. So take steps now to protect the precious memories that you've collected. I've given you some ideas tonight. I hope you found one that might inspire you to take care of those memories of your own.